All right, today we're gonna to be looking at Adobe Lightroom. I'm gonna be walking you guys through how I edit my images. I've been shooting for 13 years professionally now and I've used Lightroom for those 13 years. And we're gonna walk through all the different tools within Lightroom, even though, even though I don't use every tool within Lightroom, we're gonna walk through them just so you can kind of see what they are. And really and truly what I'm hoping to do with this video is show you that Lightroom is not as hard as, as it might seem at first. I know it can be daunting once you open Lightroom and you look at it and you're just like, where do I even begin? But I'll, I'll show you where to begin. It's, it's pretty simple. And before we jump into it, make sure to hit that like button. That helps this video a ton. And if you do hit the like button, I'll edit, I'll edit this photo of Morgan today. If you don't hit the like button, I'm gonna edit this photo of my dumb face. I'm just kidding. I don't wanna look at my face either. We're gonna look at Morgan today. And because this video should be relatively quick, today's video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound, the leader in YouTube music licensing, the soundtrack of this channel, and they're just, they're just the best. If you are a creator making videos for the internet, you know you have to license the music that you use. Otherwise, you're looking at copyright strikes on your channel, or even worse, the owner of the copyright can monetize your video. If you make a video and put it on YouTube and it starts making money, but then somebody else says, hey, that's my song in there, they get all the money. It's happened to me and it's terrible. So shoot over to epidemicsound.com, get a subscription for 50 cents a day, avoid all those problems, get access to 35,000 music tracks and 90,000 sound effects. It's more music than I'll ever use. So if you're a creator, first thing in the description, shoot over to Epidemic Sound, totally free trial, go in there, check out the library, see how everything works and yeah, make your life easier. And lastly, merch shout outs are gonna be after the tutorial. So hang tight if you've bought a shirt or a hoodie on the merch shop recently, you're uh, you're getting a shout out on the channel. But again, after the tutorial, so, so stick around. All right, into Lightroom we go. And here we are in the library module. You can see the library up here and the develop module. We're gonna focus on the develop module today. We're gonna focus on editing these photos, but in the library module, you can see my five images that I've imported. Again, we're gonna use this as our main image we're gonna edit, but some some of the tools in here don't really apply to this image. So I've imported a few others just so that we can we can play with all the tools today. All right, this first image, let's click over to the develop module. We're gonna edit the image, click that up. And normally what I would start with is one of my presets. I pretty much have three presets that I use for every single image that I create. Over here, I have my, my version of a black and white, my kind of more of a punchy edit, and my daily style that I use for almost all the images. If I go to one of the other images, you can see, I click the daily style image on there. That's what most of my images will end up looking like or the black and white. Those are kind of the three starting points that I use for every image. But all a preset is, is those dials already adjusted and then saved. So people keep asking me to, to buy my presets and I'm just gonna show you how I edit my images, which is my preset. So do this and then just save it. And now this right side, this is where all of our tools are. This is where the entire edit is gonna happen. We're gonna start with our histogram panel up top here and you'll see that as I hover over different parts of the histogram, this changes. So it'll say blacks and as I move right, shadows, I go up here, here's my exposure my highlights and my whites. And this is showing me where the pixels in my image are. Now, this photo was shot well after dark. I shot it at ISO 6400, which is absurd, but I had Morgan in the middle of a desert and we had a chance. So I, I, and it's now one of my favorite images. All right, so what we're gonna do first is I'm actually gonna click on the histogram and then I'm gonna use this to adjust my image. And you'll see as I pull on the exposure in the histogram, this exposure slider moves. So I'm doing the same thing, but both tools adjust the same thing. If I crank on this slider here, you'll see in the histogram, the exposure up there moves also. I just find it easier to kind of jump back and forth between them by hovering my cursor over here and using the up and down arrows to make my adjustments. So my right hand is on the up and down key. My left hand is moving the cursor. I'm gonna bring my exposure up a little bit. I'm gonna bring those shadows up on this image a little bit, even a little further. I'm gonna bring the highlights down a touch, the whites down just a touch. This is right about where I want my image. So I've done all that in the histogram panel, but again, down here in the tone panel, you'll see I've changed my exposure, 
my highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. The contrast slider in 13 years of shooting professionally, I don't think I've ever used the contrast slider. I'll show you why in a minute here, but, but right now let's go back up to white balance. And one thing in this white balance area, you can just grab this and drag it warmer or drag it cooler. But you have this little guy here, which is our white balance selector. And by clicking that, I get this little eyedropper. I'm gonna go over here and try to find something that I think should be white and go ahead and click on it. And now that is white. I've made that white. The rest of the image has adjusted to that. This is about what it actually looked like. In real life, this is about what it looked like because again, it was well after sunset. It was very blue, kind of greenish. So I, I like that it nailed that, but that's not what I want my image to look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset that. I want this to look like I had shot it a little bit earlier in the day, right after sunset maybe. So I'm gonna crank that up and we're gonna get a nice warm image. Yeah, I like that right in there. That's looking pretty good to me. So you can use that eyedropper to, to kind of figure out what your white balance should be or, or get yourself close, but ultimately you're gonna look at the image and you're gonna dial it in so that you like how it looks. And I like that a ton. So we're gonna move down our basic panel down to presence. So texture, clarity, and dehaze. Now a good way to think of these three tools is like brushes. Tech Texture is a, is a very fine brush. Clary is like a medium sized brush and Dehaze is a, is a heavy brush, it's a thick brush. So you'll see that if we, if we just grab these and just crank them, I crank texture all the way up, you'll see what happens to the image. It gets, it gets very textured. And then as we move up to Clarity, it's a much thicker brush. It's kind of a heavier, thicker sharpening, thicker contrast being added. And then Dehaze is gonna add really heavy contrast, but it's also gonna add saturation. So if I crank up Dehaze, you'll see it's gonna get really, really contrasty, a little bit darker and saturated. Now, all three of these tools have a use case. On this image, I probably wouldn't use any of them, but if I go over to an image, I can take this image of Morgan and I can show you that on texture, if I go that, it's gonna really texture the skin, which we don't like. But what I would do on this image is I would bring clarity down about 20 points. And you see how nice her skin looks. Bring that back to zero. You'll see more lines, more of those details in the skin. And if I drop that down to about negative 20, I like that. On almost every portrait that I shoot, if I don't want somebody's skin like really heavily texturized, like if I'm shooting a guy, I want a lot of that texture in the skin. If I'm shooting a woman, I don't want that texture. So I'm gonna bring my clarity slider down 20 points on almost every female portrait that I shoot. And then the dehaze slider is, is more for something like this. This is a good example where if you look at this image and you look at this image next to each other, they are both, so both straight out of camera, but you'll see this image has a lot more contrast and this is kind of more faded out and the reason it's faded out is because the sun was behind Morgan it hit the lens just a little bit a little bit of lens flare kind of softens everything up so what we can do with the dehaze slider here is I can shift R to bring up my reference I'm gonna bring this photo down here up and now I can look at this photo and this photo and I'm just gonna move my dehaze slider up until it looks like there was not anything put on there so I'm looking at my contrast I'm looking at everything and that's about right there. These two images look like they were both shot without any lens flare. Again, here's the before on that image and the after, and that's just the dehaze slider. All right, back to this first image. Again, we're not gonna use texture, clarity, or dehaze on there, but vibrance and saturation. These are these are two sliders that, that people don't usually understand very well. So saturation, let's just go ahead and crank it, and you'll see everything in the image, all the colors of the image, become saturated. Let's shoot over to this image because it even shows it a little better. Let's go ahead and crank the saturation on this and you can see her skin tones, they go, they go crazy. Her skin tones became much more saturated along with all the other colors. Now the difference between vibrance and saturation is that as you crank vibrance, it's gonna raise all colors except those oranges and reds, kind of that, that little tonal value that is our skin tones. So saturation is used to raise all colors and vibrance is used to raise all colors except skin tone. So back to our first image there, I'm gonna go ahead and use vibrance since I have a person in here. That's about all I'm gonna do right there is 10 points. Again, this image kind of has a style that should be kind of more faded, a little bit less saturated. It's kind of 
kind of the look we were going for, but use vibrance and saturation to your taste. If there's a person in your shot though, use vibrance. All right, the next panel down is tone curve. And this is something that, that I use on every single image. I use a luminance tone curve. Now here's our luminance is our, our white one. If I click on red, that's our, our red curve, our green curve and our blue curve, RGB. So we go to the red one and you'll see that it's kind of red up here and it's more of a teal down here. If I grab that midpoint and I pull it towards red, everything gets reddish pinkish. If I pull it down towards teal, everything gets tealish. Now this lines up very similar with our histogram where we have blacks over here and we go to the right and our whites are over here. So on our histogram, our blacks are over here and our whites are over here. So if I grab somewhere down here and I just lift this, what I'm doing is I'm bringing red into just the shadow area. I'm pushing the shadows towards red, or I could pull the shadows towards teal. I can double click those to undo them. Do the same thing with the blue. Here's our blues and our yellows. If I wanted kind of some warmer tones in the highlights, I could pull these warm tones towards highlights, and then I could bring some blues into the shadow, and we get kind of that that very cool look. I actually like that look a lot. It looks pretty cool. We're not gonna use it in this photo, but it does look cool. I pretty much only use red, green, blue curves as like a style to be added after I've edited an image, but this I'm gonna use on every single one. I bring my midtones up just a touch, bringing my shadows down just a touch. I add one more point down here in my shadows so that I can lift my blacks just like that right to about output 25. That's usually a good spot. And what you're gonna see is this kind of gives like that more faded look because what I'm doing, watch my histogram up top as I do this. So right now my blacks are 100% black and right up here you can see those blacks are way down, black, black, black. And then as I raise this up, what I'm saying is I don't want any pixels to be able to go 100% black. I only want them to be able to go that far. So now every pixel that was in my image was pure black. Now it's at 75% black and you get kind of that faded look. You can go crazy with it too and really crank this like way up. You get like that very faded look, which, eh, you know, some people might like that. I like just a touch. So that looks like a good curve for me. Again, curves, man, there's so much you can do with curves. It's probably the most powerful tool in Lightroom. I just use it sparingly. Speaking of powerful tools, our HSL and color sliders. Now, in my presets, I kind of have some, some things predefined within here, but we're gonna start from scratch. And let's go over to this image because we got lots of colors in here. All right, there's a very quick edit on that just so we can get it close so that I can show you the HSL and color sliders. So basically what we're doing here is we're changing the hue, saturation, and luminance of any color you want within your image. Now you can click on color and you see each color broken out, or you can click on HSL and this is gonna break out hue, saturation, or luminance, or you can click all and see them all at once. I like either being in these hue, saturation, luminance, or in color. Now the nice thing with color is that it's already broken down for you really easily. So I know on pretty much any image I'm gonna use, I'm gonna bring my reds 10 points high, saturation 10 points down, and my luminance five points down. That is for every single image. I'm just gonna start with that. I always know my reds, I don't want them so red. I want them a little bit taken off. And then with my oranges, I'm gonna go up five, down five. With my greens, I'm gonna go up 30 points, down 30 points, and up 20 points. Now you'll see what those greens did back there. If I uncheck it and recheck it, you'll see that they kind of went from like a warm green to more of a, a mild green. I kind of toned down the green so they didn't pop so much and so they weren't so warm. But you can see as I'm doing this, I'm only affecting that one color. So as I grab greens, these yellows, her skin tones, nothing else is changing, just that color that I'm grabbing. And then I'm gonna go into my HSL and hue, saturation, luminance. Again, just another way to kind of play with these. I can see all my colors at once. And this little tool right here is super impressive. We're gonna click on it. And now we have this little target icon I can click on any color in the photo and adjust my hue, saturation, and luminance. So right now we're clicked on hue. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this green and drag it way down and we go yellow and I drag way up and we move that way. So HSL sliders or color sliders, they're all the same thing. It's just two different ways of, of actually accessing. Saturation, I can click on that, click on my target. I can saturate any color or I can desaturate a color. And each time I'm just hitting Command Z to undo some of this, this crazy stuff we're doing. Now again, back to this first photo, there's not a ton that I would do in here. Again, I would kind of put my standard stuff on there. I'm gonna bring those blues because I wanna 
affect her shorts. And this time I'm just kind of looking at her shorts, seeing kind of what they're doing, brighten them up a little bit. I might actually take some saturation out of it this time. And right in there looks pretty good. All right, back down here, we are on to our color grading tab. And color grading is the new version of split toning. Split toning was in the old version of Lightroom. Now it's called color grading. So if for some reason you look at your Lightroom and it says split toning, this is the same thing. And in color grading, we have our mid-tones up top. We have our shadows right here and our highlights. And I don't use this much. I barely ever touch. Again, this is kind of more of a style area. It's a place to kind of add style to an image. This image is kind of already where I want it, but let's say I wanted to add some warmth to the highlights. Here's my highlights right here. I would grab this little middle bit and just start pulling it outwards towards our oranges. And that adds kind of this like almost, yeah, that actually looked really dang good. Maybe I will use color grading on this image. Uh, but this just kind of shows you what you can do. Here's our shadows wheel. I can grab this, I can pull it way out here. The further out from the center you pull it, the more saturation is gonna be. And you can literally do any color. This is why Lightroom is so powerful. There's a million tools in here to adjust and tweak your photo however you want it. Again, the only one I ever really mess with is highlights and I usually just add a little bit of warmth. And then up top here, this is just looking at those wheels separately. So if I click on that, here's our shadows wheel. Here's our mid-tones wheel and our highlights wheel. All right, on to sharpening and let's click on a different image so we can kind of go into this image. And here is sharpening on this image. Now the sharpening slider is also one that just gets totally abused. People just take it and they crank it up and they crank radius up and they, they crank the detail up and you just get this like really heavily overly sharpened image that looks terrible. When I create my images, what I'm gonna do with sharpening is if I want to add sharpening, let's say for the internet, for Instagram, something like that, I'm first gonna edit all my images without sharpening turned on. Then I'm gonna go in here, I can add sharpening to all the images and then do another export. So I now have two versions. One version is like this pure version that doesn't have sharpening that I can keep forever. And in the future, if I wanna add sharpening, I can always do that. The second version is a version that's ready to go to Instagram or to my website, something like that. But you can never take away sharpening in the future. You can always add sharpening. I can always take this image that doesn't have any sharpening and in the future say, I wanna add more sharpening and I can do that. But if I only export my images that are sharp, I can't ever undo the sharpening effect. So this is for sure a whole panel that I would say use sparingly if at all. But let's talk about how we use it. Here's our amount slider that's pretty basic. If I hold option while I slide the amount, I'm gonna get a black and white version, which kind of just helps you see the sharpening a little bit better. And then radius is the size of each edge. Do I wanna sharpen just a really fine piece of the edge or do I wanna kind of expand out and really create heavy sharpening? And the last one that really matters is this masking tool. Same thing, we're gonna hold option while clicking this masking slider. And as I drag it up, you're gonna see there becomes less and less and less white. And as I go further to the right, there's even less somewhere right in there. Everything that is still white is receiving the sharpening effect. Now, if I just sharpened everything, if I had it way down here and we zoom into something like the sky, as I crank up sharpening, the sky is being sharpened. Do you see the sky? It's actually getting sharp. There's no need to sharpen a flat sky. We only wanna sharpen edges, things that should be sharp. So as you see up here, as I click that, I hold option. As I move it, the sky gets less and less white. And eventually, boom, now the sky is receiving no sharpening while those things that are the edges are receiving lots of sharpening. Yeah, that's a great slider. I think we made a quick tip video just on that. Uh, noise reduction, pretty self-explanatory. I would say same thing, like 10 points is the highest I would really ever go with noise reduction because it can just really start to green an image. Let's click onto her face nice and tight here. And you'll see that as I move up my noise reduction, sure, we are losing noise, it's getting smoother, but everything just starts getting like really, really wibbly wobbly. It starts looking like a painting as I crank it up. This image, even though it's super grainy, I still wouldn't use noise reduction on here because I don't want to remove the noise. The grain looks cool to me. If I were though, you kind of balance the noise reduction with your sharp. So now I got to bring up sharpening, bring that sharpening up. If I was to bring my noise reduction up even harder, right 
Oh man. So now I've taken out a lot of that detail. I've gotten rid of a lot of the grain. I've kept it. It's just, I don't know. I think it starts looking real wibbly wobbly. Again, I almost never use sharpening or noise reduction on a final image. I only use those on an image that's going to go to a website or going to go to Instagram. All right, down to lens corrections. We're gonna go ahead and click both of these on. I always have both of these checked. What that's basically gonna do is it's gonna fix the issues that my lens is supposed to have. Depending on the lens that you're shooting, things like barrel distortion, vignetting, things like that are gonna happen. Watch this, this was shot with an 85. If I unclick it and I re-click it, watch that vignette. You see the vignette change? So it knows this was a Sony 85 and in these conditions, it's gonna create a lot of vignette. So it's gonna counterbalance that by getting rid of that vignette. You can see that it does that. If I was using like a really wide lens, sometimes it'll actually fix that, that really crazy distortion. So if it's like kind of bulbish looking, it's gonna go whoop and you're gonna see a lot more of that happen. Next up in effects is grain. A lot of people like to use the grain effect. And if you do, you can crank up the amount of grain you can crank up the size of grain and then how rough that grain is. And by doing that, you get this kind of cool, like like an old photo effect, like an old like Polaroid kind of look. Same thing, even with grain, it's another filter within Lightroom. So be gentle. If I was to use grain, which I sometimes do, again, after I've exported a clean version of my image, I'll then go back and add the effect of grain if I want that look and I'll have another version of the image. So I'm not gonna ever put grain on an original photo that I export and only have that. Let's go 15, 25, 35. This is pretty good. So we'll zoom in on her. Here it is with the grain and there it is without the grain. So it's very subtle, but uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Again, on this first image, we do not need grain because I shot at 6400 and there's already lots of grain on there. <laughs> All right, lastly, calibration. Calibration is a tool that is used to calibrate your camera to the real world. There's all sorts of things like, like the X-Rite passport checker. You'll see it's like a, like a little panel bit. I got one around here somewhere. It's like a little panel bit thing with a bunch of boxes and colors. You take a photo of that, you load it into the software. It creates a custom calibration for your camera for all the different colors to make it look as real to life as possible. You then load that calibration in here and magically your photos look like they should. Or rather the colors within your photos look like they should. The cool thing though is it's just another tool in Photoshop. So we can go in here and I can use my shadows, my red primary, green primary, and blue primary, and I can change the global look. This is where a lot of people do their, their blues. So if you wanted that like teal and orange look, you crank it towards teal and you can move the red. You can do all sorts of things in calibration. I don't do any of it. I don't use calibration at all unless I'm shooting a product, in which case I'll put the X-Rite little passport thing. I'll shoot that. I'll create a custom calibration for my camera so that as I shoot a product that has to look like it actually looks, my camera is creating an image of how it actually looks. Did we talk about them all? I think we did. That is all of the panels in Lightroom. And again, whatever version of Lightroom you're using, these tools will apply to that. It'll just be, it'll just look a little different, but they're the same tools that are in Lightroom CC or in your mobile app. You'll see all of these same tools in there somewhere. Yeah, I would hit export on that image and I'm, I'm done right there. So I hope this helped you guys out. I hope this helped you just kind of demystify the fact that there's so many sliders in there, but, but they're not, once you start playing with them, they're not all that tricky. Just get some images into Lightroom, start playing with them, figure it all out, and then once you've done something, save it as a preset. And lastly, before we go, we have our diaper shoutouts today. Today's diaper shoutouts, thank you to Natalie Yakub in Irvine, California. You rock, Natalie. Stuart Boone in Marmora, New Jersey. What up, New Jersey? Freddie Herrera in Memphis, Tennessee. Hot damn. Jennifer Garcia in Northridge, California. Sarah Baxley in Anaheim, California. You're very very close. Curtis McQuaid, Columbia Falls, Montana. What's up, Montana? Daniel Mata in Richmond, Virginia. Victor Brandt, Newcastle, Delaware. I think Delaware, D-E, is D-E Delaware? I think D-E is Delaware. David Uthman in Woodenville, Washington. Woodenville? Derek Saunders, Ottawa, Canada. Thanks, Derek. Ordering internationally, man, that's great. Colin mm, Vlasna, Vlasna? Colin Vlasna, Las Cruces, New Mexico. Thanks, Colin. Thanks for picking up some merch. If you guys pick up merch, I know it's 
I know it's July now, but if you pick up merch now, I'm still gonna give you a shout out on the channel because I think it's cool. I appreciate you guys getting merch. And if you get a medium blue shirt, it's it's this one. This is a new color, only available in medium blue because the normal medium blue is like crazy back ordered because of, you know, the thing. So if you get a medium blue shirt, you get you get this new color, but you can only get it in, in a medium blue. All right, again, hope this helped you guys and I will see you soon. All right, today we are going to be looking at Adobe Photoshop, not Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom.